Hi, my name is Demian, and I am a partner engineer at Google working in Chrome and Chrome OS. Today, we will talk about a topic that is often overlooked, but has a great importance for web developers, since it determines the entry point to your application. Navigation management. Navigation management refers to the various methods for handling navigations within a web app or PWA. This includes actions, such as when a user clicks on a link within the scope of your web application. Different outcomes can result from responding to user actions, such as a tab or a click. One option is to open your web app in a browser tab. But if users have an installed version of your PWA, launching it in standalone mode may be the optimal choice. This might seem like a minor distinction, but the landing experience is a crucial aspect of your app's UX. In some scenarios, it becomes even more critical. Let's suppose you have a video calling app that allows users to create video calls and schedule calendar invites for other users. When the time of the call comes, users will click on the invite to join the video conference. Those without an installed PWA will land in a browser tab to join the call. However, for those who have previously installed your web application, there is more than one option available. Leaving the user this choice adds cognitive load and friction, potentially leading to frustrating scenarios. For instance, the delay in deciding could result in arriving late to the meeting. Traditionally, the decision to open links in a browser tab or the corresponding installed application depended on the platform. Mobile devices tend to prioritize launching the corresponding apps if they are installed and fall back to a browser tab when they are not. On desktop, the model historically followed the HTML specification established in the early 90s. As a result, links typically open in a browser tab first, signaling to the user that an installed application is available to handle them. Take into consideration that each browser vendor might have a different implementation and user interface. Beyond adding friction, our data shows that users generally prefer links to open by default in installed applications whenever possible. Therefore, Chrome aims to standardize this behavior across platforms, prioritizing the launch of installed PWAs whenever possible to better align with users and developers' expectations. We refer to this part of the navigation management process as navigation capturing. This new version that prioritizes launching PWAs will be available starting in desktop Chrome 134, initially for Windows, Mac, and Linux, with Chrome OS support coming in a later version. Here's a demo showing the behavior before and after the launch of navigation capturing when clicking a link to a web app in a Google Calendar invite. In this example, the link opens Google Chat, which the user has already installed as a PWA. Before the new navigation capturing, whenever you click on a link to a web app, in this case, Google Chat, even if you have the PWA installed running or not, it will open it in a browser tab. As you can see in the icon in the top right corner of the address bar, you can still launch the PWA, but you have to do that manually. Let's see what happens after the navigation capturing update. In this case, if you click on a link to another web app, but you already have the PWA installed, it opens the link in the standalone PWA. As we said, this is more aligned with users' expectations for installed PWAs. While the default navigation capturing behavior cover most cases, as a web developer, gaining a deeper understanding of navigation management techniques is essential for several reasons. First, to clearly distinguish which behaviors are determined by the browser, what controls users have to customize this behavior, and which APIs allow developers to manage aspects of the launching experience. Second, to gain a deeper understanding of the logic behind the browser's internal decision-making process. And finally, to accommodate special cases and architectures, which may apply to your own setup. Various elements play a role in the navigation management process. The first group is user actions, which includes interactions such as clicking or tapping on links. The second one includes tasks and decisions managed by the browser, such as default behaviors and settings. Finally, we have the developer controls, 
including web APIs that allow you to instruct the browser on how to handle specific tasks. The interplay of these elements will ultimately determine the outcome, such as opening the PWA in a standalone window or a browser tab. To get started, let's analyze a very common user action to understand how this process works. The most basic interaction is clicking or tapping on a link in the web browser, such as from another web page. At that stage, the browser takes over, triggering the default navigation capturing process. The first thing that the browser has to determine is whether the navigation is capturable. In general, a navigation is considered capturable if it creates a new frame and does not open in an auxiliary browsing context. Now, if the browser determines that a navigation is capturable, then the next question is if the URL is controlled by any installed PWA. A PWA controls a URL if it's within its scope, as defined in its web app manifest. In the case that there are multiple PWAs in that scope, the one with the longest scope field wins. At this step, the browser checks additional information from an internal installed web app database, which stores details of the installed PWAs along with the respective scopes. Depending on whether the PWA is installed, the link will open either in a browser tab or within the installed PWA. If an installed PWA can handle the link, the browser will first check before launching it whether the user has explicitly indicated in the app settings that the PWA should not open the supported link. If the user hasn't opted out from launching the PWA, the browser will then proceed with the launch. At this point, the browser triggers the launch handling algorithm to determine how the PWA should be launched. For example, in an existing running window or in a new one. That process is under the developer control and we will cover it later. And this completes the navigation capturing process. As we mentioned, this updated version that prioritizes installed PWAs whenever possible will be introduced in Chrome 134, gradually rolling out across platforms. So far, we have examined an example user action, such as clicking a link on a page and the browser's decision-making process that's triggered as a result. Before we wrap up, let's review the developer controls available, like different web APIs that you can use to influence parts of this process. The first API is Launch Handler, which as we saw, comes into play exactly when the browser makes the decision to launch a PWA. The API allows developers to control how the PWA is launched. For example, in an existing window, a new window, etc. Developers can define it through the launch handler member in the web manifest, which includes a subfield called client mode. This subfield determines whether a new or existing window should be used and whether it should navigate. The allowed values for client mode are focus existing to handle the link in an existing app window, like a PWA that is already running in standalone mode. Navigate existing. In this option, the most recently interacted with browsing context in a web app window is navigated to the launch target URL. And finally, navigate new. With this option, a new browsing context is created in a web app window to load the launch target URL. The developer can use the launch queue API to provide additional parameters and handle special cases. Launch Handler API has been available for a while since Chrome 110, but has become more useful with the navigation capturing update. You can learn more about this in this article. The second API is Protocol Handlers, which has been available since Chrome 96. Although it's been around for a while, it's worth highlighting because it plays a key role in this process. By default, installed web applications can handle HTTP, and HTTPS links within their defined scope. However, developers may also want to register their app to handle other types of links. For instance, a dialer app might handle tell links, an email client could respond to mail to links, and a music app might register for links with a custom web plus music scheme. 
URL protocol handlers enable websites to register their capabilities to open or manage specific URL schemes like this. Protocol handlers can be registered programmatically via the Register Protocol Handler JavaScript API or declaratively via the Protocol Handlers Web App Manifest member. As we said, this API has been around for a while. You can know more about it in this article. A final related API is Web App Scope Extensions, which is currently under development. This API allows you to handle requests across different origins, such as subdomains. That way, if the user clicks on a link to a subdomain, you can signal the navigation capturing process so it recognizes it as part of the same experience and can seamlessly launch the corresponding PWA. This API is designed to solve some restrictions that arise when using multi-origin architectures. As mentioned, it's a planned feature, but you can learn more about it in the explainer by following this link. And that wraps up today's discussion on navigation management. Now, let's recap what we have learned. Navigation management encompasses the various processes and techniques for handling links and different methods for launching web applications and PWAs, such as user interactions like clicks or taps. This process involves a combination of user actions, browser decisions, and some controls that developers can use like various web APIs. Today, we analyze the most common case of a user clicking or tapping on a link from a web page. That allowed us to understand the internal process that takes place on the browser that we call navigation capturing. A key takeaway is that starting in Chrome 134, we are rolling out a new version of navigation capturing that prioritizes launching the installed PWA over opening the link in a browser tab whenever possible. However, the case we analyze today is not the only one that exists. There are other scenarios that arise. For example, when clicking or tapping on other surfaces like links inside an ATV app. This could lead to some special cases that might require additional considerations. We highly encourage you to learn about these cases to have the full picture in this article where we cover this topic in detail, including some code samples and cool demos. And finally, keep in mind that while most of these processes are defined by default by the browser, there are some APIs you can use for certain steps. This includes supporting protocols beyond HTTP and HTTPS through protocol handlers, controlling how your PWA launches, whether in an existing window, a new window, etc and even expanding its scope to be invoked by links from different origins using web app scope extensions, which is currently under development. And that's all for today. I hope you have gained insights into an often overlooked yet crucial aspect of web development, navigation management. Thanks for watching and see you next time.